Welcome back to Practical Bash and Terminal Skills, part three. Today, we want to talk about returning data from functions, which is actually not really possible. We learned that we can only return exit codes. So let's see how we're doing that and command substitution. So for this, let's dive right in. For now, I've thought of a case. Let's say we want to download a specific version of a tool that we need in our CI pipeline, but we don't really know the version. So we first have to get the version. For this, let's build this very simple version.sh. As always, start with our shebang line. And then um, let's say we want to do something like echo. We don't want to download for in this, this uh, simple example. We just want to echo the current version of foo is, well, what is the current version of foo? So now we're getting into the point where we realize that uh, getting to that version is non-trivial. So we have to, let's say, query an API and ask that API what the specific version is. So for this, we need to somehow get the return value of a function in here. And uh, how do we do that? Okay, let's first build our function. So let's say function get latest version. And you might be thinking that we could do something like return 3.2.28. However, that does not work. So I'm using shell check here. So if you look at the uh, bottom line in the screen, it says can only return 0 to 255. These are the exit codes. Other data should be written to standard out. So the return value of a function can really only be used for exit codes, which means what can we do? So instead, let us echo this out. Okay, so how does that help us? How can we catch this? So let's go to here. And what we can introduce is command substitution. So if you do the dollar sign, and then parentheses, inside of here, you can run any arbitrary command, such as our function. So let's run get latest version. Let's see what it does. Um, we have to make it executable as you learned in the previous script. And now we can run it. And the current version of foo is 3.2.28. So just to show you that it's not just printing this and happens to be um, and here, we could also save this in a variable. So let's say we want something like, let's say we have two functions, get latest version and maybe also get oldest version it doesn't really make so much sense but that's not the point so the oldest version would be 001 and let's say we want to run both of these functions so newest should be get latest version and oldest should be get oldest version so just as to show you, we're now saving this return value in a variable here. And then instead of command substitution, we can just reference the variable here. So let's take the oldest for here, for example. So even though we're echoing in this function, even, even though this function is being called and it's echoing this, we're not seeing this because the return value, sorry, not the return value, but the, the standard output that this function is writing to is being caught with this command substitution and saved into our variable. So let's run the script again. And as you can see, we're only seeing, even though we called both functions, we're only seeing the result of the second function. I mentioned standard out here. If you don't know what that is, please wait for the next video where I want to get into different streams. But for now, let's first think of another practical example. So I think this versioning thing is already a very practical uh, thing. You, you might see this in, in scripts that run on CI where you have to install something when I get the version first. But another place where you see command substitution all the time is if you're working with Docker. So let's say we have Docker and we just want to run in detached mode. Let's run a node container and in there, let's just sleep for a bit so the container doesn't exit immediately. Very cool. And let's do the same thing with maybe a Golang container and also sleep in there. Cool. So now we should have two Docker containers running and indeed we do. So let's say you want to stop all the Docker containers that you have. So maybe you've seen this before, something like Docker RM F, then a command substitution, 
and then this thing. Okay, so what does that do? Before we run this, let's run the inner command first. So docker ps minus q is the same as before, but it's really um, in, I think the Q stands for quiet. It's condensed down to the info that we care about, which in this case is the IDs. So if you run docker rm minus f with this in here, docker psq, we're killing all docker containers. Just prove it, there are no more here. So this is an, a, a practical example where if you're working with docker, you might see this kind of command substitution every day. And um, you might even have used this before without even sort of understanding what it does. And now you know. So this was part three about echoing uh, values to standard out, catching them using command substitution to catch them and even saving them into variables. So I kind of, this wasn't originally planned, but I kind of sneaked variables in here. So if we just go back to our version script, you saw that variables were assigned like this and referenced simply with the dollar sign. In fact, you learned about one variable in the very beginning in the first video about the dollar question mark, which saves the exit code of the last command that we ran. So thanks for watching for part three. And in part four, we'll talk about what standard out is, what standard error is, and what these kind of streams, these kind of output streams are in general. Thanks for watching and see you soon.